So I'm from Blackpool. Um, my dad was, uh, grew up in Rochdale, um, which, well, my granddad was from Rochdale, sorry. Um, my dad started in Rochdale, ended up in Blackpool. Um, and yeah, so they're both big Rochdale Hornets fans. Uh, my granddad was, my dad was, still kind of is, I think. Um, so yeah, he introduced me to rugby, took me down to Wigan St. Pat's when I was whew, eight or nine years old. Um, played a year up there, played up with uh, Ethan Howard at Wigan. Mm. Um, so yeah, I played there until I was about 15 and uh, yeah, just, just fell in love with it, yeah. Were you one of the ones who sort of fell in love with it after you started playing it rather than before? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think my dad said I was I was a bit rubbish when he started me out. He started <laughs> me out in Rugby Union um, at Fleetwood near Blackpool. Oh, right, um, yeah. Before he took me over, he said I was a bit rubbish, but he said I, I grew into it a bit and then, yeah, I just... I just I loved it. My because uh, we because we travelled a bit. My dad used to mm. get me down there about an hour early, so we just used to kick the ball around. Mm. And I think that's where I've got a little bit of my skill from from just just playing with my dad before training. So yeah, now I fell in love with it. Well, when did it start to get a bit more serious for you? You started at St Pat's, and did, was it Shevington Sharks after that you went to? When, yeah. when did things start to sort of take a step up for you? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think the the Wigan scouts were kind of looking at me when I was at St Pat's, and then I was playing a year up, so I decided to. Go back to my own age as the St. Pat's team were going up to under 18s and I was only 15. So I went mm. to um, Chevy with uh, Jack Bibby mm -hmm. and Yamal Hanley now is at Lee. Um, so yeah, we had a good laugh there. But it started, yeah, I was, I was about 14. I started working scholarship. Uh, and it was a big step up. Um, obviously from amateur when it, get, it gets, it's pretty, it was pretty tough at Wigan, probably mm. still the same now. Um, yeah, so yeah, but about 14, 15, started getting a bit serious and then signed my first professional contract at 16, I think. Um, yeah, and then it just kicked on from there. Because it's always that, uh, I've spoken to a lot of the, the academy lads here, it starts making that step from sort of scholarship to the academy, it's a, that, that can be a, it's a tougher period, especially when you're trying to yeah. make it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, it goes from, you've been with a, a good group of lads to probably, you'd say a great group of lads at mm. Academy, obviously they've all earned themselves a contract from them two years at scholarship. Uh, and it was, at Wigan there was a lot of competition really at that point. We had our uh, Academy team only lost one game in my mm. first year. We had pretty much every single one of them has gone on to play Super League. So that was that, that was good good for us really, it made each other better. And along with that, the the, the the training at Wigan at the time was, mm. was tough, so I think it moulded us into kind of tough tough sort of players. Did it, were you still living from Blackpool at that point? Yeah, yeah, all the way up to when I went to Canberra, I was living in Blackpool, so I was, I was travelling. It's not actually that far, it's no, about that far. 50 minutes, but uh, after after your long days at college or school, it's, mm. it can can get tough. So <laughs> it was like my it was like my life was just straight focus on rugby. You'd finish college, you're straight there straight home and do the same next day. And then in academy, when you, when you start training the first team mm. a day a week, it probably probably gets even more tough. How long was it in sort of the, when you started training with the first team that you were, became aware of the, the Australian scouts being around you? Because it, it, it seems like that sort of happened pretty quick after you made yeah. your debut for weekend. Yeah, well, um, so I played my first year at uh, academy. Uh, mm. I, I, I played pretty well, but I didn't. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a standout. We had a, we had a very good team, uh, and then COVID hit in March, and that's when I kind of um, got a message off Pete Mulholland, which was the recruitment manager at Canberra Raiders. He's a great guy. He's passed away now, and he kind of said they were, they were interested um, in signing me as like an under 21s player, and then uh, me and my dad thought about it and. It was like pretty much that that would have been changing where I was just to the same sort of thing, but in Australia. So mm. I was kind of like um and an hour in and then uh, they ended up offering me a top 30 contract, which is like real big thing. I was I was very young and it's mm. pretty unheard of. So I, it was just something I couldn't really turn down. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that's that's where it was. And I'd already I'd, I'd signed in probably April or May of that year. and. Um, I made my debut for Wigan in August. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'd actually already signed before I made my debut. Right, right. So it, it, it's a, it's an interesting one because it, was it that contract then, the, the top 31 that sort of swayed it for you? Uh, I think so, yeah, because I, I, I didn't really want to go over there and be sort of where I was now. I wanted to mm. make a, a step up. 
uh, rather than a sideways step. And mm -hmm. I think that did that and it put me in a full-time environment straight away. Um, and obviously I knew the sort of the players they've got, still got now, um, and mm -hmm. the, you know, world-class middles. And I don't think anything can, I don't think anything's the same as sort of being around that environment. Yeah. Especially, especially like in Super League, as a young player, if you go over there and you, you're with players that are playing Origin, for playing for Australia, playing for New Zealand, there's not really anything in rugby league that can match that. Did, was then, did you never have any issues looking at it from a rugby league standpoint of having to make that move over to Australia? Um, from a rugby league standpoint, yeah, I mean, I've, I've always backed my own ability. I knew mm. it would be tough and I went over there and it's probably tougher than I thought. I was, I started in the New South Wales Cup side and stayed there for 18 months. Um, and the standard in New South Wales Cup, which is the reserve grade over there, is, is, is pretty good. It's probably championship, close to Super League standard. And mm. for, for a young lad, it's like, it's, it's a lot to take in, especially when you've gone from playing academy, not mm. really playing mm. the first time over here to that. So it was, it was good and I think it accelerated my growth as a player. And yeah, especially like I said, training around them sort of players, it, it kind of, accelerates your growth and I won't say experience but you'll, you, you'll, you'll learn a lot more in a short amount of time. And then from like your family standpoint as well you've you don't said you, your dad and your granddad are rugby league fans they must have were they sort of edging you on to go and make that move or um, was it a bit harder than that? Oh yeah my dad was my dad was telling me to from day one get over there get <laughs> over there but I think it was a bit tough for me because obviously I was going over there I didn't know anyone mm -hmm. um, there's a few English lads there but I, I didn't know him, mm -hmm. and uh, like at first I put my foot down to my dad. I said, "No, I'm not going. Like I'm staying here at Wigan. It's going to be tough to get in the first team, but I've, I've backed myself to do it." And say, "Go, go, go!" And then when that top thirty contract came up, uh, it was like they it, it kind of gave a sign that they sort of mm -hmm. believed in me, and it made me sort of believe in myself a little bit more. And yeah, so I just I just decided to 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 do it and as soon as I'd signed it I, was, I probably regretted it straight away um, <laughs> thinking about it because I had a few months to think about going over there on my own and yeah it, it was like I say rugby league wise it was a big step up but also mm. as growing as a sort of person I was quite I was quite shy at Wigan uh, I probably didn't enjoy it that much um, because I'd stepped up and I was probably me and Yamal Hanley were probably only two my age that mm. kind of stepped up and like I say I was pretty shy I wasn't kind of out there so I didn't like go in and speak to loads of people at training and I sort of went in, put my head down and, you know, got on with it and it probably made me not enjoy it. Whereas as soon as I went over there, I, I kind of was pushed into that sort of, yeah, you have to get to know people, you have to talk to people. And uh, yeah, I think that's helped me grow as a person quite a lot. If you can, describe what it's like as, because you were a teenager at the time, weren't you? What it is like to land in Australia for the first time and sort of have this idea of, I don't really know how long I'm going to be here for. Yeah, well, uh, I went straight into quarantine for two weeks. That probably made it worse, go over the jet lag, but you have two weeks of not speaking to anyone. Um, but yeah, when, when I got there, I was just, like I say, I was just pushed out of my comfort zone and you kind of have to have mm -hmm. to speak to people. Um, and it's a pretty daunting feeling. Uh, I signed a three year contract over there. so And at the time, COVID was still pretty big. So I was thinking, I'm not going to see my family for three years. Um, but I think when you get put in a situation where you can't, you've got no other choice, you kind of have to, mm. you kind of have to make friends and yeah, I kind of have to get used to it quick. Um, so yeah, that was a big thing, learning how to do that. Did, did that accelerate then that sort of process, do you think? Not sort of getting to know people, it sort of forced yeah. into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was, I started off in a, a house with the young lads and was quickly put in a house with uh, Corey, Haru and Ira and I will have water over there. Um, and Corey was a good mentor for me. Uh, he's like they've become my, probably my two best mates over there. I still mm. talk to him weekly, um, and it's I think it's good, like I said, just to be to be pushed out of that comfort zone. And you you make friends for life. They'll be my friends for life now. Mm. And um, yeah, like I say, Corey taught me a lot, and Albert same age as me, so he taught me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> something something about rugby league in the UK is that no matter where you are in the Super League, nine times out of 10, you'll be playing for a side that's not too far away from home. Obviously in Australia, you don't have that security. Do you, do you feel that when you're there, that it's if something happens, you are half a world away, literally? Yeah, I think people underestimate it. You see people, oh, they've come over homesick. Mm. The Aussies, even the Aussies that come over here go back over there and say, oh, homesick. 
but it's, it is a big step. Um, I probably had it quite hard because I was on my own and I was young. Mm. Um, but I think for anyone going over to the side of the world is is, is really tough. Um, and there's times where you just want to give your mum a hug or mm. you want to talk to your parents about you know the game or training or what's going on with your day. And there's only so long you can FaceTime for really. Mm. Um, but it, it, it makes you sit back and reflect on sort of how important your family and your mm. friends are. Um, and how important it is just to, to see him every day like now. I've been home a year now nearly and like to see all my friends and family all the time, it's something that I don't take for granted anymore. Was that then the most challenging part for you of that move? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like like I say, I've always I've I am I know I'm I've never been the you know, the, the best player in the world or the best young kid in the world, but I've always backed my ability to play rugby. So that wasn't really a worry because I I know I work hard and I know my sort of yeah, like I say, work ethic, work, work ethic around training, but it was the, yeah, like the, the, the people, the getting to know people and the missing people from home, which was the hardest bit. So how did you then, or did you take any steps sort of try and overcome that? Like, so you mentioned the, the FaceTiming, but it's like, mm -hmm. there's only so many times you can do that. It's like, what did you do to sort of keep yourself comfortable while you're out there? Um, I, I got to know my, my housemates pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it just came naturally, really. I was still shy when I got over there, but after six, six months I, I was good mates with everyone at the club mm. and I think it helped that I went to a good club over there with good people I think mm. they've, they're a pretty tight-knitted bunch there's not many coming in and out every year at Canberra um, so yeah I was fortunate in the fact that I had a good support system there around me and Ricky the coach and all the well-being sort of people over there were really good with me as well so yeah I'm pretty grateful for that. How much do you think it changed you not as, just as you develop in rugby league but you as a person to go from that a sort of academy level to almost first grade rugby or being around that first yeah. team in the NRL. How, how big was that for you? Oh yeah, it was it was massive. Um, and as a person, you realise you got to, you got to step up. Mm. Uh, you can't you can't be someone in the background and get your NRL debut, which I found out pretty quickly. I was told me I was over there eighteen months before I got a shot on my debut. Um, so yeah, you've got to, in training in the round training, you've got to be talking. You've got to be it's pretty uncomfortable but you've got to try and be a leader around older more experienced mm. people um but but learning to do that's i think stood me in good stead with mm. being as soon as i got shot into the first team here i was I, I knew how to be vocal and i knew how to sort of speak to people on and off the pitch here so it's it, it does help a lot and it makes you feel more comfortable D did you then notice also because like you said it's this almost a weighted expectation change as well because you've gone over as a young English kid and you hear about mm. it all the time it's does do you feel that the Andrew kid has been picked to come over to Australia <laughs> almost uh, I probably felt the opposite really um, I felt like I, I didn't have any pressure on me there's no there's I mean Don Young's done it now but mm. apart from that there's no really young you know like teenage English lads that have gone over there and done anything mm. so I, I, I didn't really see it as that I, like I say I didn't go over there and you know, make, make my international debut over there and play 100 games. I only remember debut and played three games, but I didn't, the, the whole time I was over there, I didn't really think about that. I was just mm. enjoying the experience and learning a lot about rugby at the same time. You, you've mentioned it briefly, but I know I'm almost cliche now, but going over to Canberra, it was such a big English contingency there. I think there's maybe mm. five English yeah. players in the squad already. Is it Was it calming to you at the time, knowing that they've been through the same thing and come through it, or did you not really get the chance to think about that? They're just another player in the squad. Uh, yeah, it was. It was kind of, kind of like that because everyone was pretty welcoming. But yeah, they'd they been over there a while, and um, I had good chats with George, Josh Hodgson, mm. obviously Elliot White, it's a great guys as well. We all like I, I spoke to them and just just about just about rugby and life really. Not nothing mm. really about how was it coming over here. Mm. It's kind of comfortable to hear them sort of accents that you hear over here. Really. It's, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's something you don't think about, but when you hear an English accent over there, it f feels a bit like home. So you, you went over there and obviously you had the, the two weeks of quarantine when you first landed. When you finally sort of get let out and you're part of the squad, part of the team, do you get approached by anybody to sort of ask, what do you need to make you feel comfortable? Or is it more of a case of this is how life is, you adapt to it? Uh, a bit of both really. I don't think they want to be on top of you, but at the same time, you, you've, you need some help from some mm. people. Um, Andrew Bishop was the um, 
well-being officer over there and he was really good. Uh, mm. Obviously, the Canberra's sort of away from anywhere else and there's yes. not many rugby league people grow up and play for the Raiders from Canberra. So I think the, the club's kind of used to players coming from far, far away and having to, to settle into the place. Mm. So they've got kind of a good setup there to, to uh, help people feel comfortable. Did you ever get to a point where you, you felt properly comfortable? Like you, was there ever a day where you thought I could stay here for the rest of my life if needs be? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I felt that like many times really. Mm. Uh, I, was, I was really enjoying it, and then when I was getting close to the close to the first team, like I, I was enjoying them little small wins mm. more and more. Really, um, like the, the the main reason I came back was was because my jaw and it kind of mm. I broke my jaw and when I was signed hospital it kind of put things in perspective like I was missing family and stuff and yeah it was probably a pretty rash decision but uh, not one that I regret. How big was it for you at the time to make because you, you mentioned it took a while to get your first team debut mm. but to eventually get that and it, it was against Penrith right yeah. as well so to eventually make that first team debut did that change your mentality about something think actually there's a possibility that I could make this even though you said it's yeah. more likely. Yeah um, well I've, like I say, I've always backed my ability and I always, I, I was always telling myself that it would come eventually and when I did get my debut, it was, it was a big thing. My, my parents flew over and presented me my shirt and stuff and um, it was, like I say, a big step. I'd only played one first team game over here. Mm. It was a team full of young lads. Um, so yeah, I, I, I only got 15, 20 minutes on my debut, but it was sort of a taste of like, sort of a step in the right direction and a taste mm. of what it could be like if I, if I uh, if I keep going the way I'm going and improving, um, and it kind of gave me a bit more motivation to improve and keep going, and not sort of keep going, but take that extra step and mm. get more games. And I think the week after I was dropped to 18th man, um, but I ended up playing. Someone got injured, so that was another sort of mm. step in the step in the right direction. Then I went back to reserve grade, so it was it was kind of it's kind of an up and down sort of thing, especially when you're young over there. There's you've got a lot of players that are wanting to be in your position in a lot of, lot of competition. Um, so yeah, it was, like I say, it was, it was a good taste, but kind of after that was kind of more bring you back to reality of- Bittersweet. You, yeah, yeah. You, you've, you've alluded to it already, but so you're there, you've been there for a while at that point, you've made your debut, um, you've settled down a bit more, and then, but was it the 9th of July, wham, you hit with a broken jaw. Yeah. It's like, how much, what was that like for the first, days, weeks of getting that? Oh, it was, it was that horrible. Um, I remember I was playing against Sydney Bears um, in reserve grade. Ke Kev was playing for Sydney, actually. Mm. He had a quite a good team. Like Matt Lodge was playing a few of the first teamers and uh, I thought I was playing pretty well and I think I just got a bit overexcited, tried to hit someone off kickoff and bam, broke my jaw um, in two places. Yeah, so the first few days were pretty bad. It took me three days to get operated on with that. Um, <laughs> So I was just sat in hospital thinking about it really. Um, and a lot of my mates taking the mick out of me because I look like, like a bit of an idiot. Um, but yeah, it was the, 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 it was one of them where I just, because I had so long on my own in the in the hospital, I was kind of just thinking about home and stuff and mm. that kind of swayed my decision. It's not, it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's not actually too bad of an injury because you can, you can get back running and lifting weights pretty quick. Um, but obviously to me, it felt like the end of the world at the time. Obviously, it was, like you said, it was a real nasty injury. We saw the scans when it came out at the time. It's And again, you, you alluded to it before, but how big of an influence was that towards making a decision to come back home? Yeah, that was massive. I think if that hadn't happened, I, I probably wouldn't have come back home. And I might have made a couple of more first team appearances that year, but I, at that time I knew I was at, like, out for the end of the regular season. And it was, one of them where I was, I was just missing home and I don't know what it was. It was like a switch in my head that just said, no, I just, I just want to get back now. Yeah. Um, and I think my dad was pretty annoyed with me about it because he, he knew that I could have stayed in, in a different world. I probably could, but I, I made my decision and it's not one that I regret. I'm, like I say, I'm loving it here. Um, and I think I made the right decision of coming to this club. Um, but yeah, it was that, that, that was the main fa driving factor in me coming home, yeah. And um, looking back now, in your time over in Australia, would you have changed the way that you approach things any differently? Obviously, it's it's hard to approach how you arrive because when you yeah. get in lockdown. But outside of that, would you have changed how you sort of acted around the team or bit, been in there or how you act outside the squad almost? Uh, no, not really. I don't think you you think about it. It just comes pretty natural. Mm. Um, 
especially being in a new environment and stuff. And it's, I, I'm so glad I went over there. I think I'm not exactly extroverted now, but I was, I'm not. I'm not the shy kid that I was when I when I went over. I've kind of learned how to talk to people and make small talk and you know make, make new friends, which I've had to do here again at Huddersfield. Um, but yeah, I think it's good for a, for a young lad to change the environment. They get they get hit with something that they're, they're not used to and they've not really seen before. And obviously, after you eventually recovered from the injury, you've come back over. Things started moving fairly quickly for you because you, you come back and it's a, a World Cup. You're playing for Ireland. Mm. You, you signed with us. Yeah. It's you, you finished the World Cup. You straight into pre-season for mm. us. And you're straight into first team games. It was. How good was it for you, or was it was it good for you to be back, sort of into the rhythm of things, playing on home soil? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I love the game, and I, I, I really enjoy training, and you know, get, getting stuck in with the sort of fitness side of things and all that. So it, it was kind of good to just hit the ground running when I got back and had something to work towards. You know, going to the gym and sort of getting myself back fit for that World Cup and then knowing that I've got something after that and something after mm. that to sort of work towards. Um, so yeah, it was it was good for me. I think if I came back and I didn't have anything to look forward to, I'd be I'd, I'd have been yeah getting a bit depressed. But yeah, I um, yeah I, I, I love the World Cup. Um, that was a great experience, and then it was good to just to just come here and it's a bit bit of a different pre season than what it is in ours. It's you kind of get hit obviously with with the cold and the rain and stuff, <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, it's something I love doing, just getting stuck in. And speaking of the World Cup, Toby King absolutely stole your try against Jermaine yeah. Carrey, just to clear that up. I know, yeah, well, I've got a try, so it's probably my only ever try to so I've got, so. <laughs> I've watched that video back so many times, and you'll definitely say it to him afterwards, you've taken that yeah. from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess at the moment, obviously, you've moved locally, and not only that, but you're getting regular games for the Giants. It's, how big has it been as a, you enjoying life for the Giants at the moment? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, it's probably been a tough year results-wise and probably performance-wise as a team. But I'm I'm young and getting them minutes and being yeah. around the first team's good for me. Uh, I need to make the transition now and to starting to talk a bit more and try and be a leader. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I love it. It's a good group of lads. Um, like we have a good laugh around training and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's. I think every team goes through sort of this this sort of period and mm. it will come out the other side as a group together and I think it'll make us stronger as a group and yeah, like I say, I, I, I love it here. And, and obviously it's almost, you've, a lot of people would have you down as one of the first teams on the, the team sheet at the moment. You, you ask a lot of fans, it's you've made a big impact in, in that pack. Is it, even as a young lad, it's when you got the injury, people were devastated by it. Is it good knowing that you've got that backing to be a, a first team player now? Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, for the whole thing, I've, I've, I've backed my ability and it's, I pride myself on just working hard, getting stuck in. And I think what I was the sort of perfect coach for me because he, he, really, he appreciates the sort of the little things that people don't see. And that's, that's the sort of things I pride myself on. And there's times where I've missed it in games this year and I've been kicking myself because I've missed the little inside pressure and stuff. But that's, that's not what people really see. But that's, like I say, what I pride myself on. And uh, I think, when you put things like that together, it gets noticed a little bit. But I just want to do, want to, when I play, I just want to go out there and do what's best for the team, and that's what I try and do every week. And obviously, it's a, it's really frustrating at the moment for you You're out for the season now mm. of an injury. It's, but again, in this almost bittersweet moment, it must be nice knowing you're in a situation now with an injury that when you come back, there is a first team place for you there and you know that you've got what it takes to be in that that situation to come back to it. Yeah, 100%. It'll, it, it'll be sort of back to square one for me though. But I've got to find my way back into the team, but it's something I get excited about really. Um, I know that I'll come back a million times better player after this. Um, I've been, I think I did it on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, I was in the gym for three hours. I've just, <laughs> I've, I, it is frustrating me, but it's kind of a good opportunity to have a nine month pre-season which is pretty rare you don't really get that so yeah I, I'm excited and I'll just take him one step at a time really um, and when I do get back I'll have to train hard like I, like I always do and try and try my best to get back in the team and work my way from there just one step at a time. Nice one, perfect, thank you very much Charles, brilliant, oh, thank you very much.